Given a complete weighted graph on n vertices, the traveling salesperson problem seeks a least weight Hamilton circuit. To find it, we could check all n factorial possible circuits. To verify that we found it, we must check all n factorial possible circuits. This is impractical, so we try to find approximate solutions. But how good is a solution? Since a Hamilton circuit of n vertices requires n edges, then it must have a weight greater than or equal to the n lowest weight edges. This gives us a lower bound, but we don't know how close we can get to it. And in general, we want to find the greatest lower bound. So can we find a greater sum that is also a lower bound? So suppose C is a least weight Hamilton circuit with weight W of C. If we eliminate edge E, we obtain a spanning tree with weight WC minus WE. And we can easily find a least weight spanning tree S for our graph. Consequently, the weight of this least weight spanning tree must be less than or equal to the weight of our Hamilton circuit minus the weight of the removed edge, or rearranging. Since this must be true for any edge in our Hamilton circuit, then it must be true for tilde E, the edge of least weight that is not already part of our spanning tree. And so we have, giving us a lower bound on our solution. So, for example, if we know the distances between cities are as shown in the table, let's find a lower bound on a solution to the traveling salesperson problem. So, using Prim's algorithm, we found a minimal weight spanning tree consisting of the edges, which had a total cost of 725. The least weight edge not already included is one of Boston, Montreal, Boston, Chicago, Montreal, Detroit, all at 200. And so this spanning tree plus 200 gives us a lower bound to a solution. We can improve our lower bound as follows. Suppose we have C as the least weight solution to the DSP. If we omit one vertex V, we get a spanning tree on G minus V with weight W of C minus V. And this must satisfy the weight of the Hamilton circuit must be the weight of the circuit minus that vertex V plus the weight of the two edges in C adjacent to V. But now C minus V is a spanning tree on G minus V. So that means in our inequality, we could replace the weight of C minus V with the weight of S, the minimal weight spanning tree on G minus V. And now we can restore the vertex and the edges we've removed. The problem with using this inequality is we have to assume we don't actually know which edges are in our Hamilton circuit. So our inequality can be rewritten as where E1 prime and E2 prime are the edges of least weight adjacent to V. In other words, we've replaced our actual edges with edges of lower weight to maintain our inequality. And so to find the best lower bound for the weight of the Hamilton circuit, we want to find the greatest possible value among all vertices V. And if arguing with the inequalities doesn't come naturally, here's an analogy to think about. If you know you're taller than everybody in a room, you're taller than the tallest person in the room. So in this case, we're looking for the tallest person in the room that has the spanning trees and some additional edges. Of course, we still have to find this lower bound, so we can apply a greedy algorithm to find the greatest lower bound. There are two possibilities. We could either find the greatest possible value of the weight of the spanning tree, or we could find the greatest possible value of the sum of the edges. Since it's easier to find the edge weights than the weight of a spanning tree, because we'd have to find the spanning tree first, 
We'll look at the former. So what that means is we want to find a vertex of V where the sum of the edge weights has the greatest possible value, where the edges themselves are the edges of least weight adjacent to V. So let's take a look at our table of values, and we could begin by finding the two edges of least weight incident on each vertex. So B has least weight edges 50 and 100. N has least weight edges 50 and 25. P has least weight edges 25 and 100. M has least weight edges. And A C and D have least weight edges. So the greatest value of the sum of the least weight edges is for Atlanta, and this suggests we might want to find a spanning tree for our graph minus Atlanta. So if we omit Atlanta, we can form a spanning tree using Prim's algorithm. If we do that, we would select, and this spanning tree would have a total weight of 475, which spans G minus A. Now to bring A into a circuit requires adding two edges incident on A, and that's going to take at least 650 more. So a lower bound for a minimal Hamilton circuit is, 